the, the rig? Yeah, come on in. Looking good, huh? Well, that's got enough weld on it. Look at that. Chris is Paul Nosak. Hey, Chris, how, how are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too, bro. Yeah, he's from New Jersey. Oh, no kidding. I went to high school in Jersey. Yeah, that'll, that'll take it. Yeah. I thought you just had the two. No. That's yeah. what I was saying. Oh, right, right. Yeah, that's three, and then I added the cross bracing, and then the front end on it, too. Yeah. The engineer yeah. said, are you going to put a plate across the front end? We had already done it, so I felt good. Yeah. Like, yeah oh, I'm yeah. Like th yeah. This is vital. You might, are you going to put one more here or no? It should be you plenty. want one more? You're pulling it. You tell me, you get it. Well, it weighs, oh, that weighs 3,000 right pounds. Guarantee it. This is my neighbor Paul Nosak. You might know him from uh, things like uh, what was your what was your movie called? Oh, Tree. No sack for hire. Saws for hire. Yeah, he 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 knows video. He a also bit. he also knows trucking and heavy construction. But and, I don't know welding. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know welding, Doug. Yeah, but I ain't welding. Chris is welding today, so I don't know anything about that either. Our lives are in his hands, but. What do you I think? You think he's got I, enough? I think, you know, you're not going to have any twist energy except when you turn. Right, and I figure we're going to jack so, it around hard the first day. I think it wouldn't hurt to put maybe another 12 inch plate over here, just like you got right there. No problem. For that. Consider you know it done. I mean? Oh, so you're bolting it in Yeah, I'm hole. bolting it in up there. So those are grade 8 bolts up there, so 40,000 pounds each. And okay. there's there's a lot of framing in there too. So when we get to the water, yeah. this will come off. Yes, exactly. We're, we'll jack up and we'll put uh, some cribbing underneath the keels, and we'll drop all this off, and then the crane takes it from there. Okay. And so you're not also welding this to the bed or to the boat? No, because I don't want to have to jack up my paint. It gets bolted up there, right? But then you see these three pad eyes back here. Yeah. They grab onto these pad eyes on the frames. Okay, I got you. So it's like some extra arms catching out there. Yes, 10,000. Okay. They're, they're 5 8 inch chain. They each take a working load of 10,000 pounds. Okay. So we got 60,000 pounds of pull against it. And then those will stay permanently on the boat. The or pad eyes? Them I, can yeah. I can unbolt them. Can unbolt I'm going to keep the holes on the boat because we'll tell people pirates shot at us and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. We can sure lie about it nicely. Shot at. Exactly. You know. Oh, no. I see the five eight five, eight five eight inch hooks on it, and so that's what we've designed to, to lock into. And so, all of that is rated for how much? I think it's forty thousand on that one. Is this working load? But the chain's only ten thousand working load, and I got three of them. So high to the anchoring low. Because I can drill through up high all the way and I bolted it with a plate on the other side. You wanna go up and look? So see these see these stanchions makes like an I-beam. So that there's a bolt on each side of it. For all three of them. Now these are gonna have eyes in them for the chain hooks? We're gonna take them down and we're gonna cut uh, slots in them for the chain. So we're gonna put a slot, so the chain goes in, and then another piece of steel will be cut. To go to around it and it will okay. weld in okay so once it's in it's in okay good until good. we cut it out yeah so my thought is when you jerk the thing sideways to make a turn you really got three chains that are doing most of the work in it and they're all catching and yeah. they're all catching on yeah. one side yeah. you go the other direction the other chains catch mm -hmm. so really we got about thirty thousand pounds working load those chains will go two three times more than that before they pop yeah but if we're having to turn with more than 40,000 pounds of force, we're, we're stuck in the mud or, yeah. you know, there's something already wrong. So we're asking for it. I think probably we'll plywood all this. If we have to. If we get weather like this, it's going to be dry for the next yeah. week. Yeah. But so. you're not ready to go today. Yes, we are. We're ready to go. Let's go today. We don't need things like already, engines. Oh, it looks like the fence was already down. <laughs> oh, I take it down. Yeah, I took it down to drop the crane. You notice I'm short one crane? Oh no, I didn't notice. Yeah, that's the steel we're Did using down that? there. Yeah, those are my that's my crane. Why didn't you come get those I beams I had? Because I have a crane. I only need one. So I dropped it. I was gonna I gotta get it rid of it anyway, get the boat out of here, so yeah. But I appreciate your offer. You're doing enough for me as it is. Dude, I haven't done nothing. Mm. I'm worried about my bedroom. Your bedroom? Yeah, which bedroom I'm going to get to stay in oh, when I come on the ship. Cabin. Cabin, <laughs> Paul, not bedroom. Which cabin? You can have any cabin you like. I want this spot right here with an air mattress. That's awesome. You can do that. 
Okay, come up here and look at this. So see down in there where the, where the those bolts, those holes are where the bolts go? Uh-huh. And I've got the steel running down the size of it. Then there's a steel plate in the bottom. But I and think this is a closed chamber, right? Yeah, yeah. And then also you're going to put plate on this side of that to yes. reinforce that. Yeah, they're laying down there in the bottom. And the plate will get there just the sitting there or welded? Just just like a backing plate, not okay. welded. Okay. Just yeah. like these up here. Yeah. And you got any recommendations for beefing it up? I'll do it. Want two more chains? We can add two more chains. No, I, I think you're gonna cover it. We get an adjuster. Yeah, Doug, um, I think that if this is these three points are your fastener points, I'm concerned about this pulling out. Okay, or right. having give. You want something and, lower. Yeah, I would like to see you anchor something to your to your fifth wheel and go clear back to the trolley, a chain. Put a shackle back here and run one chain like a guideline. Yes. Right through there with a hole, yeah. put a shackle, and that way it'll keep, it'll, well, number one, it's gonna tie this together, yeah. which that's yeah, not yeah. essential, but it's gonna keep that downward pull, you know, and keep Yeah, that it's together. gonna be straight in line with yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, I think that that's the only thing I see that, you know, all my years of engineering and, and uh, MIT and, <laughs> and ones I never went to. Yeah. <laughs> We'll do that. God, do I wish. I gotta go to work. Go. Th thanks for dropping by. Okay, my friends. See you, Chris. Nice meeting you. Have a good afternoon. What did you say it's been? Like two and a half years? See, I left in 2018, so yeah, about... Two and a half years. And a half years. Look who walked back in the door this morning. This is this is Greg. Greg did... Where's your welts? Oh, you did this thing. I got all this. Oh, yeah. The anchor, and then... I thought about you the other day when I was down here painting this. I thought, who would have ever done that? Thought, oh, yeah. Greg did that. He was here for a welding school back then. And Chuck, hey, thank you. We're waving, Chuck. Chuck's now in the Air Force. My God, time goes by quick. And the rest is family there. Yeah, this is neat. Well, I'm glad to see you again. Yeah. And piloting an airplane now. That's right. That's cool. And this one. You know, come get some. Yeah, that's good. What uh, unit? 7th OMRS. Greg's wearing his medic shirt. Without medics, you die. I like I can that. attest to that. Nope. Nope. Yeah. That'll do. That'll do. So we decided to go inside the keel just because it's a straighter shot back to that plate. And this is one of the bolted on pad eyes up top. That chain is 5 eighths inch wide, so I'm going to make a notch about 3 quarters of an inch wide. And I need to come down, see each one of those links of chain is, you know, it's 5 eighths round rod. And 5 eighths here, and about an inch here, so we're talking about uh, 2 and a quarter inches. So I want about an inch and a half up there, 3 and 3 quarter inches down. So, yeah, right there will be the bottom. We don't have our big chain yet, but what it will do is the big chain will go down in there like that, and then this will come over the top and pinch it in there. Except the bigger chain is much bigger. This is 3 8 inch. The big stuff is 5 8 inch. And once it's pinched in there, we'll weld this down so it'll stay in there until we get the plasma torch and cut it back out. very Frankenstein but I do not see it coming apart. Sweet. That is it. Tomorrow we'll fit it onto the boat. Well that worked out. Look at that thing nearly balanced now. Like days. So you gotta push in and pull down at the same time. Water. Water. Uh, if you tighten this one up, it should pull it in. Right? I can push one up. That no. bolt that's there, right? If we okay. tighten it up a little bit, it should pull it in. Oh. Right. Okay, we'll do that. Just to uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm with you. 
Okay, we got all but one bolt up there, but when the chains come to tighten this up, that'll probably take care of that problem. And then we got a pretty big gap back here, but I think what we'll do is we'll probably shove some more foam in there and wooden blocks and wedges in there and take that slack up. And yes, it just takes a one-way trip and then it gets cut up and taken to the scrapyard because there's certainly not going to be anything else in the world that it fits. This is Alex. Alex is Alex Escort Services here in Tulsa. This is what they'll do, I think, is it drops this two inches. Yeah, I didn't cage them back with bolts. I just cut the arm. But I could well. I could. Good. I mean, hell, it looks like to me all you're looking at is running a couple of airlines. Well, and a and tank. You just hang along the side. That can be air, air shop arrows, three eighths. Yeah. Neighboring. That's going to be a DOT thing too. We'll ask them. Yeah, they like to see that stuff. So. This is Pete, old friend of Alex over there, Pete's a heavy haul trucker. And like all heavy haul truckers, he wants brakes back here too. We're gonna still see what the Department of Transportation says, but I don't think there's a trucker out there that doesn't want some brakes back here. When we put the load onto the carriage here, we'll weld those in at that time. After you get it set. Yeah, so they act like hold downs as well as taking some of the load out here on the side. Sure. Now we'll have the rudder on, is what I'm thinking. Yeah. So that'll stick out a bit, but that skeg, that bottom shoe, is the lowest part back here. And so I put the hitch kind of high, so I can raise that up just okay. a hair more. Good. And also, I'm 16 feet from the bottom of the keel to the top of the bow, and I'm a little bit less in the back. So by lowering the bow, I, I raise the back of the transom back here, and that kind of levels us out. We moved some 20 foot high boxes out there one time and they had to shut the power off going into the port. They wouldn't let us go under those power lines. Is that right? That's the ones I was telling you about on 36th Street. The port comes out next week. So yeah, but we'll see. But I'm not 20 foot. I'm only 17 four. Okay, good. So I think we're clear. I think you'd be... We're gonna take the cabin off to, to move it? Yeah, we're gonna take the pilot house and put it on the other trailer out there with the mast. Right. I'd, I'd work on the front a little bit. Okay, what would you do up there? I'd probably have a diagonal in here. To help okay, this. you want which way do you want? You want it coming down like following yeah, the bow? Come down here back towards the neck so this can't move. Got it. Even a piece of your pipe driving runner from here up to there and one driving. on the other side. Okay. Be fine. That'll be easier actually. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, what if you're going down the road and all of a sudden you got to stop or you're in an accident? Some truck hits something. This is going to try to, the boat's going to continue to go on forward. Yeah. It will. Our chains here aren't going to help us. Those chains there won't help us. Probably going to have to come from up there. Oh, you want something to keep it from sliding forward off this? Yeah. You know, is it good enough to tie on there and come down to this? It is to uh, keep it from trying to slide back under the boat. You know, keep the boat from sliding forward on this fifth wheel plate. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. These bolts here are 40,000 pound grade eight bolts. Sure. How thick is that hull? Quarter inch steel, and it's got. Uh, I'll show, take it up here and show you. It's got some flat bar behind it. Mm -hmm. I'd probably just put an eye on the front of this. Okay. Chain, run chain off of that to the eye. That's easy to do. That way, there's no way it can it can go down any further. Okay. And if you got a diagonal on it, there's right, no way this collapse yeah, underneath it. it. Okay. I, I'd feel safe moving it like that. I can do that because those are bow rollers up there. I can, I got pins that go across that are two inch diameter. I think that'd be fine. Okay. Good. So the thing that Pete's talking about over with me is we've got too much weight up here because the truck weighs ten thousand pounds. So right. we so with thirty five thousand pounds from the boat. 3,000 pounds from the rig that we added, that's 38, and then we'll be 48, so we're 8,000 pounds too much. Right. So, DOT won't let you do that if they weigh it, if they actually come well, out to we'll do it. We'll be that. honest with them. Well, then they won't, so we need three axles. they won't give you a permit for that. Right, so we need a truck with a, what's that little axle that comes down called? A lift axle. A lift axle? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need a lift axle on a tandem, or we need a three axle truck. Right. All right, we can find the three axle truck. Yeah. Yeah. We can do that. Three axle truck to put a lift on it? That'd be a four, actually a four axle truck. Four axle, so truck. Four axle Three truck. Axle. You're talking, count, right the, count the front axle. In the back. Okay. That makes sense. So seriously, you'd back this thing down. Yeah. So pull forward into here and then back it down the street. Yeah, pull forward or... Nobody's thought of that. That's Nobody's thought of that yet. It's not that, that far. Yeah, it's yeah. not that far. 
Need a truck with some low gears, you know, so you can go slow. There's a dual lane, mm -hmm. and there's my drawings for it. Sure. Probably end up at a little bit less yeah, distance right here because you'd probably be back a little bit further. Yeah, and it's high enough to do that. That's the example they sent me on that one. I see. There's a couple different height fifth wheels you can. I mean, a lot of heavy haul trucks are going to have a 54 inch fifth wheel. He's got them open. He's already got them. I'm pretty sure it's 54 or 58. Okay, we're at 50. I, I think a low fifth wheel would work. If you're really low geared, it's a lot easier to back up. I mean, you know, you can do your corrections easier. You got more time. You don't have to start and stop so much. But a good driver will be able to do it anyway. All right. So, Doug, you have been enjoyed coming over here. Sure, you did enjoy coming over here. Okay, that's it. The more bracing is in, we're good to go. And no, we're not going tomorrow, not next week. It's still gonna be a while. It's gonna be okay. We'll get there. Everybody will have months of notice before we start heading to the waters. Chris made a mess. Everybody makes messes. Bringing back memories. <laughs> it's such repressed memories. <laughs> Okay, we got two 30-ton jacks out here. That's 60 tons. In theory, that's enough to lift the whole boat. In reality, there ain't no way. They're Chinese Harbor Freight jacks. I don't, I don't think they'd ever do 30 ton even if we pumped that hard. But the idea here is we don't have to. We're just gonna let it teeter-totter on these two piles of cribbing underneath the keels. Catch it on that pile of cribbing up there before it does something horrible. And just get it high enough that we can get the foam there between the carriage and the hull. Do you hear it making noise? Yes. It's <laughs> barely started. Oh, that's your it's phone. The phone. It's the phone moving. Wow, it is lifting it already. That is unnerving every time. I know, I every time slide, I'm thinking <laughs> of jumping backwards, you know? <laughs> is it already sitting on it? Looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's under load. Wow, okay. That was easy. Let's try the phone about a quarter inch more on that very top edge. All right, well, we gotta let it down, take those two by fours out. Yep. Uh, wait, 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 stop. Got it. We're getting very close. I, don't, I think we could tip it a bunch more. Well, the, yeah, the center of mass is like right there, isn't it? Do you feel good about tipping it further? I, I do, too. Yeah. I, I mean, well, that's I'm just if saying. If it slides it's, off, it's going to go all the way to the ground. There's no stopping. I don't think it'll slide. But it's not. Well, you you know the boat. Where is the center of mass about? Well, you're standing at it. Yeah. There's, 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 there's no reason for it to slide forward then. If that was greased and had no friction, maybe it wants to go forward right now. But that thing is three blocks of wood grabbing paint. Probably. The other ones are obviously clear. Oh, this yeah. One. So let's, let's just try the other All side right. and see what it does. Both of them are stuck. Maybe we'll go up a little more. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter how heavy it is when it comes down on a finger, does it? No, I think... You know, anything over a couple tons is done anyway. <laughs> you lose a finger regardless. You're not using that one anymore. Yeah. That's a good one. Okay, we just do that. When you got a budget like us, yeah, that, that much YouTube is significant. It's like we're rolling in cash now. <laughs> and that's good because I mean that electrical stuff, that is not cheap junk no. to buy. And honestly, you don't want to cheap out too much on that stuff. Yeah, I, and that, that is the easiest damn thing for anybody to say though. You should spend more money on that. If I would started that way off, this boat would be sitting there. Well, the thing is, you gotta be cheap where you can. Cheap where you can. Breakers. Even, no, no. Even if it's going to fail in the first year, you got a year, right? That's a year. And there's merit to that for you, sure. You let the cash flow yeah. catch up to you, you know? Yeah. And yes, you have to replace it after a year, but that's okay. You got it done and you're out there, you know? Yeah. So. Oh, I should have grabbed another piece of foam. I should have. Here, I'll get you a piece of foam because I got to get a tape measure. Don't don't be cheap on the phone because I actually have it. See, that's the other thing. <laughs> do you own it already or do you have to buy it? Exactly. But why are you using that? Because that's what I already have. Yep. 
The economics of boat building. I just wanted to see if I could get my fat ass in <laughs> Fried chicken last night was really good though. Oh, it was excellent. What's your pulse right now? Nah. Yeah. Oh, enough. It. I got an exit route. <laughs> Always get an escape path. Here we go. You ready? Right. Yeah, you're going to go fast or slow? Try and go slow. Okay. It's making noise. Let's go. Far you got about half the travel still to go. Let's see if it's going to touch anything. Hold on, hold up. That's okay. All right, keep going. Yeah, so we don't have the whole weight on us because we're only got a fraction of the weight because of the cribbing right. at the keels. Okay, this is open. That one's open? Yeah. Okay, so just push it on down. Oh, look. Weight's all on your front one. Yep. So we can use somehow this one to get that cribbing out of here. We gotta get that jack out, rather. We gotta get more ground clearance on it. We almost need to jack outside of the plate. Yeah. Get off the plate, just let it push down through the dirt? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'll probably work. Because we're not really taking much weight of the boat yet. We're still just teetering it. Right. Okay, see so you can pull your jack now. Yeah, that got it. Okay. I think your jack is still gonna get trapped before you can get down far enough. Yeah, let me just try it. No, it stopped oh. going down. Oh. Hey! Let me see if I can get it. Yep, it's gonna be loose. Look at there. She is in the air on the rear. That's worked out nice. See, we were trying to solve a problem and it wasn't going to be a problem. It's still a fraction of the boat because our fulcrum's nearly in the middle. Now, if the mass are right, most of the weight's going back onto the carriage. It's going to come off the fulcrum here and we're only going to have about 38,000 pounds up here in front which is so oh, you know what 16 tons so those two jacks easily question is is there daylight here and the answer is not yet let me go look at the foam back there that was a noise still tight Definitely put weight on that now. The foam looks tighter, yeah. I think this frame here was at 45 inches is what it, I started with. So we've already come down a half inch on the springs. So that's great. We'll watch see what it does. What are we at? 44 and a quarter. Everything's rebounding a bit. Uh, came down a lot. Look at this thing go up. <laughs> the jack's going up yeah. twice what it's coming down, I think. Yeah, all this stuff's compressing. We need, we're going to have to use steel. Look at that. That's all rebound. Yeah. Came down an inch and went up four. It's on it. Okay, we're going to replace our cribbing with steel, at least some steel here, because what's happening is it's all compressing down. And so we jack it up four inches, the cribbing compresses by three and presses into the ground. The steel won't help the ground, but it will help this compression of all this wood. And that's what we're fighting against, against these uh, pillars underneath the keels too, is we take the weight off, the ground actually rebounds, so the ground, the dirt, is coming back up because it's been compressed, but it still wants to move up. So we take the weight off, it rebounds. This is a cool deal, guys. Get out there and volunteer for something like a railroad or a submarine or one of those old boats. Great way to learn stuff, isn't it? Absolutely. And meet people. Exactly. Great push. There you go. Now we're going to tack them together just because those are only four inch wide. Give us a little more confidence. 
Yeah, we're not even back to 44 and a quarter yet. I think we're fine. We're doing good here. We're doing good. What? Oh, are we hitting back there? Tail's gone down. That's why it's leaking, because we're lifting the whole fucking... We're putting the full 30 tons on yeah. we're going to. Yeah. See, here's our problem. We came down and sat on top of our cribbing here, so if we do that, we have to pick up the entire load of the boat on a 30-ton jack, and that's not going to happen because it's a 60-ton boat. Okay, you lower it, and I'll let you know when I can get it out. you got to pull that cribbing out. Yeah. Here we go. Give me a count coming down half by half inch. Okay. We got an uh, inch and a half right now. Okay, keep going. Oh, we got it. Okay, that's it. Hold. Yeah, this is snipping like that. You want to check that rear end? Yeah. Got to stick with that. All right. Oh, yeah, we're at 34 and 3 quarters now. Well, it's pushing down the springs. The tires are flattening out, so. Isn't that about the top of the stroke? Still moving. Good. No, it's tight. Go yeah, we're gonna have to go up more. All right, All right we're free. Oh. Now the question is, can I get my jack out? No. Freaking dirt coming up. Yeah, now we're at 43 and a quarter, so we came down a total of an inch and three quarters. That's not bad. So the aft frame here has all the weight. It just a, no, it's exactly what it's going to be holding. Almost exactly what it's going to be holding because we're jacking it right from the fifth wheel hitch there. All right, I'm going to go a little bit more, but I don't trust it. I don't trust it either. The whole thing's sliding sideways. There it is. Just moved. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. that's good. Yeah. You got it. It was cut. Catch on. Slag. Pretty much later. Yeah, pretty much later. Yeah. It's not bad. Alright, so it's just going. Are we off at the rear? We're on the yeah, thing. we got a little bit of room still. Do we? Yeah. We could try letting this one down. Yeah, we can. But we're going to do that now. Sideways, right? Don't want yeah, to go side. Yeah. Okay. All right. Will this hold? Yes, it'll hold. I just step back a little bit further. <laughs> Coming down. All righty. Inch more, half inch, quarter inch, taking pressure. Oh, oh, I didn't get my jack out. Wait, wait. No, no hell. All the wood's going to rebound. Shit. Okay, well, we wanted it to be stiff. That's going to leave it stiff. It's got it on load on both. All right, just leave it like that. There we go. Patrick here has the distinction that every time we've lifted this boat, he's been here to jack it up. We, we lifted it the first time. First time to just, just get, get it up. clearance yep. so we could work underneath yep. it. The second time to weigh it and the third time to put it on. You have a magical thing. You've been here three times. Every time you hit the jacks. I'm your good luck charm. Yeah, beautiful. Works fine. You're going to have to come back when we load it onto the trailer. I'll I mean, to the truck. I'll be there. Yeah. What trailer? <laughs> These two four inch beams made us a little nervous. So we added some stiffener plates between them. Just so we're not nervous. A break earlier, we went in and started looking at videos, of course, and what's coming up on my video feed is heavy haul stuff. So you, I've heard this so many times. Oh, y'all leave moving that boat to the experts. Yeah? Let me show you this clip from this video, okay? These are the experts. Mahmoud, 
you don't get any more expert than this. So sometimes maybe just a little paranoia and you're good. And then stop worrying about it. Do it. Well, it's a new look for all the weight on the trailer and the hitch up here. Well, I don't know about you, but it kind of freaks me out to see it like that. All up in the air. And what's really amazing is these tires all have air in them. I didn't bulged out that much. These are a little low. We're just going to let them sit. We'll take the weight back off of them, but only after the bottom of these keels get painted. Yeah, you see that green patch? That's the original um, military paint that went on this. And then we got uh, Marilock and then coal tar. And then the anti-fouling has to go onto that patch. And uh, the trailer's worked out exactly like we planned it to. So everything is freaking awesome. So that's it for me and for Pat. He heads out tomorrow. Next time. We're doing jacks. You know you're supposed to be here. I'll be there. Okay, cool. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. What you make today?